I see that all the, the uh, so you can follow if you would like to you have to learn a little bit Dutch or Frisian because both languages I, I use. So first, where are we? So in the center of this picture, there we are uh, with the blue delta. Uh, and uh, I'll get a little picture on that. So that's 1.7 million people living on, almost in that region where Groningen is the main uh, capital of the Groningen uh, province and Leeuwarden of the Frisian province, approximately 100k people are living in, in, uh, in this city, city. So it's a really a rural area within the European context. So that's where you are if you are in the north of the Netherlands. And please come if you are uh, one time in the north. Um, if you look at the landscape in the north, you see a lot of turps, as we call it, uh, rubbish mounds from earlier days. And on those mounds, you see a lot of churches. And this is the church uh, of Hallam, which is a village in this blue delta near the water sea coast. And this is where I was born and raised. So this is the village where I come from. And I, I told already to Max that the identity of the, the, the landscape you come from and the language comes together with that is very uh, related to the identity you have. So that's, that's a great thing to, to work with. So um, as well, I'm uh, part of, you could say, a history. Huh? Uh, so as well, my uh, ancestors are uh, uh, are buried all on this turf in, in Holland. So one day, hopefully, I will get there as well. I don't know yet. <laughs> hopefully, it takes a while. But anyway, it, it gives a, a, a sort of meaning of life that you say, okay, this is where I come from, and this is where I I'm heading to. So it's a very personal story that the connectivity with your region is, is uh, one of the reasons to, to work with. And maybe you know this book of uh, Roman Krasnaik. He made a book, The Good Ancestor in Dutch, it's called uh, The Goede Voorhouder. Uh, this afternoon, Nienke Laverman uh, will probably show that uh, she's making a song, of, she made a song of that. And uh, she will uh, perform that to you, I think. But it's all about, uh, let's say, how we are looking to future generations. So um, if, you, if, you, if you look at that and think about that, then how do we connect our past uh, via our present to our future? And, um, uh, and that's what the good ancestor is uh, all about. Um, and if you look then uh, towards the region, the development of a region, uh, then you see, okay, why do we have to change something? So that's where it starts on the left-hand side of the sheet. And on the right-hand side, uh, what do you want to achieve then with the region? So what's our common regional mission eh, for the long term? And then between uh, today and, and uh, uh, this, this beyond 2030, uh, what's the way to come there? So how are we getting then from, from the, the current situation to a situation in the future? And you can call those tracks to get there. So that's the strategy, you could say, if you have a regional mission to get that up and running. So first, why do we have a story in the north? So what's happening here? And of course, in the region, the global problems are the same uh, here, having, of course, their own, uh, let's say, uh, focus points. Uh, but as well, the global goals have, have local context here as well. So climate, biodiversity problems, we face it as well, of course, in this part of uh, Europe. So those global challenges are challenges for the region as well. And we have to develop a strategy. And I thought Ian was talking about that this, week, this morning as well, to transform these uh, SDGs or these global challenges to a local or a regional context. And that's what we try to do. So that, that's the reason why. And what we try to achieve uh, is, is something we would like to describe as a mission uh, because it's focused on long term. So it's not, it's not to do with the coming two or three years with the political situation where the co coalitions are, uh, but it's on long term. And, and this mission thinking, it started with uh, the man on the moon, you could say, uh, or Kennedy saying, not the man on the moon, yeah, formulated the mission that before the end of the decade, someone would be on the moon. He said it somewhere in the beginning of the 60s and in 69 that happened. So it was a long term mission, maybe almost 10 years to get somewhere. And this mission thinking or cathedral thinking, thinking in, in long term plans as well. This is a beautiful example and huh? the, the, the Sagra Familia in Barcelona made by Gaudi. He started it up in 8082 and it still is, is, built, is built, I think, for the coming 30, 40 years, then it should be finalized some, somewhere in time. So it's a long term plan. And as well, uh, the Chinese wall is an example of that. And, and uh, in the Netherlands, for example, the Delta Works, uh, very important uh, works, 
which were uh, after the, the problems we have in the 50s in sea land, where uh, a lot of water came in from sea, we built uh, in uh, almost 40 years a complete system, which we called the Delta Works, a long-term mission. So this long-term thinking, that is where it is all about. And we did it in the region as well here, uh, when we started up with the idea to become European capital of culture. That, that started as well as an idea in 2008, uh, focusing on 2018. But uh, in the end, we are, uh, with that plan, we were looking at 2028. So a 20-year plan with 2080 as a sort of moment in time. And now we are developing a new cultural plan. This year, Arcadia, it's called. Uh, and in 2025, we're going to make Arcadia 2.0, etc., etc. So we built this idea through till 2030. So um, these are missions. So that's, that's how you, uh, if you would like to achieve broad prosperity in the northern of the Netherlands, in this blue delta, we have to understand a little bit how these missions are working. So this, this broad prosperity, what we do is, is see through the SDGs, you're familiar with that, of course, and use the perspectives of the SDGs to translate them to our regional context and say, okay, what's happening within these SDGs or the topics within these SDGs and, and what does that mean for us, for our education system and the way we are handling uh, problems. And so we build a narrative, you could say, um, yeah, there it's back again. Uh, we build a narrative where we uh, uh, saying, okay, this over, uh, overall goal is achieve broad prosperity for our region. And we have a few building blocks that we say, okay, in this region, we are very inspired by the theme of water because it's in our tourism, in our technology, in our climate missions, etc. Um, as well, we are very active on becoming a circular region, for, for example, in our agricultural system or our energy system. And the third line is explore the rural society, we called it. So that's more has to do with uh, what's the future of rural societies within the European context. And uh, so that's more, let's say, the social challenge. For example, in the north, um, we are, uh, uh, we get too much great people, older people. Uh, so we don't have enough people to do the work uh, in the coming 20 years. So we have to work on that. So that's, a, let's say, a so societal challenge we, we face. And then within this context, you could say this, this dance floor or this strategic framework, as we call it, um, we try to develop a lighthouse projects, so all landmark projects, who are very typical for what, what, the, region is, uh, what the region is doing uh, within this uh, broad prosperity mission. And um, I will show an example of, a, of such a lighthouse uh, idea uh, later on in this pro presentation. So that's, let's say, the structure we work and, and how do we get this up and running, you could say this dance floor, how, how does it work? Well, most of the people think the SDGs are, of course, of course, a little bit complex, too much topics, etc. So we say, okay, if you try to uh, evaluate uh, that, that process, it's, it's about economic, ecological, and societal balance, you could say. And that's, that's basically what, what's necessary. And of course, the planetary boundaries uh, on the lowest side of this picture are uh, their uh, leading. And that's where you build your economy on and your society. So we use a, this picture a lot to show as well uh, how we are working on circularity, how it's our water uh, uh, topic related, and how are we developing our rural society. And within those SDG perspectives, you can see transitions. Um, and that has to do with system change. Uh, that, that all uh, societal systems are uh, getting away and new are coming. Most of the times it takes 20 or 30 years to get things done. So for example, in the Netherlands, we work now quite a lot on the development on a new agricultural system, and that's transition, uh, which already started 10 years ago, and it takes another 20 years to get there. So that the old system is building down. So that's, uh, you could say, the phase out of an old system and a new system is, is coming up. And you can do that, or you can look at all the SDG perspectives to have a look what kind of transitions are happening. Uh, for SDG 7, I'm just an example, you see, okay, we are moving from a fossil energy system towards a sustainable energy system. It takes maybe 30 years to get there, 40 years, uh, but that's a transition which is happening. So within all those SDG perspectives, you can see how global challenges are having a local context and uh, as well focus them on transitions within those perspectives would happen. So that's, let's say, the structure we 
try to develop. And then we start dialogues, uh, moments where we bring people together, outkijkers as we call people who have the talent as well to have a little bit look uh, beyond the years and, and uh, have the talent to have uh, future, future ideas. So people from science as well, artists for example, they're really good in that and uh, entrepreneurs. So we try to get, as say, you could say a dialogue structure up and running in the north with uh, dialogue pro programs, with phone catons we did last year. Uh, we organize SDG network meetings, that kind of stuff. And it's all of course about how do, how is the, f the future generation, what we call our ministry of, ministry of future, you could say, how are they look towards the future of our region? And what we do is already in, uh, in the Frisian area at least, and uh, already people from the north are uh, connected as well, is to try to build alliances uh, around those SDG perspectives. Um, they're not all up and running yet, but we're starting up with that. Uh, and we have already for SDG 7, for example, the fossil free uh, community, lots of people working on energy systems. Um, uh, Spark the movement, of course, where Helene is very bus busy with uh, education uh, systems. We have an innovation pact, which is all on economy renewals, all network related uh, in our region. Networks of people who are, let's say, working from such a, a SDG perspective. So that's part of the structure we try to establish in uh, the north and try to get there with this broad prosperity mission for our region up and running. Uh, finally, I would like to share an example which I was working on since 2012 already. Um, it's now in another phase, so I'm not having a big, uh, I'm not working a lot anymore on this topic, but it's an example of how a mission comes through in, in our region. And it has to do, so that's, you could say that's a sort of a, a lighthouse project which we built the last years. And it's called King of the Meadows, and I will show you a little bit. That's a citizen's initiative started. Uh, with the God with birth as a center, and it was all about biodiversity loss, where it is all about. So I'll explain a little bit about that. This was the picture we used for that uh, from the beginning. In the Frisian language, it's Kening van der Greide, um, and King of the Bandros in, the, in the English, and in the Netherlands we, we call it Koning van het Grasland. We made a theater show of that as well. So it's all, the, the, this lighthouse came across uh, as a citizen initiative because our farmland biodiversity and you can, well, you think a little bit about our blue delta region, you see a lot of grass, uh, so there's a lot of dairy, uh, and there's a lot of biodiversity loss, especially in those landscapes. So we're losing our biodiversity and as a symbol of that, uh, as well on European level, uh, the Netherlands are not doing very well. So. Um, we are on the lowest list of that. So we lost the most of the biodiversity within the European context, uh, together with Malta. <laughs> so that's not something to be proud of. So people in our area say, okay, we have to do something about that. And uh, it was very difficult to get political people and all the companies up and running for this topic, because they had, of course, they are having difficulty to change the system because that was, of course, what necessary. So we started up a citizens initiative where scientists and farmers and musicians uh, working together uh, in a program to, um, to, to change this. And we used the God with birth, beautiful picture is here as our, you could say, our change agent. And we, we looked from his eyes or her eyes to what we did as people and tried to understand a little bit what, what's happening in our landscapes. And this, this bird is, is our national bird. And it's not going very well, so he's, he's let's say, um, uh, he's showing us the problem with what we have with our bio, uh, biodiversity in our region. And um, we have lot of people, lots of people who, who have a lot of feeling about this bird as well. So it's not only an ecological topic, but as well a very social cultural uh, topic. The Skrius, as we call them in the Frisian language, the Grutto in the Dutch and the Godwig in the UK. And you can follow those birds as well. Uh, because we follow that. So within this citizens initiative, we worked on three areas of attention. I think it was great if, if you look at the, uh, the things uh, made for this, 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 uh, this day, saying, okay, we have to use science and art to get things up and running. Uh, and that's what we did within this citizen initiative. So we had scientists working on what we call the, uh, the, the facts, what's happening, what's the problem exactly with biodiversity. We used culture, 
uh, an art to inspire, to see, can we talk another language with this? And that, la that leads to a lot of innovation. That, that's, of course, where it is all about. So innovation spin-off. Um, so if you look at those areas, so the science part is all about following these birds. They are migrating birds coming from Africa. And in this period of time as well, and the, they come back to the Netherlands to breed over here. So it connects, this bird connects, let's say, the African with the, the Dutch uh, landscapes. And in the end of the day, it's all about, uh, yeah, how we get those little chicks up and running uh, to, to have this population uh, uh, on a good level. And it's still on the pressure, so we have to really have to work on that. And it had all to do with this agricultural system, with the, the way we use our landscape. And as well, we said, okay, we know, understand uh, with the statistics and all that, uh, that it's not going well with our biodiversity, but what are we going to do with that? And so we used as well culture and art. Uh, this is an example from the European Capital of Culture, the period we did in 2018, organized concerts about biodiversity, about understanding what's happening. So we try to, well, uh, get people in, uh, in the heart instead of in the head. So that's basically what I think uh, Helene was saying as well, uh, uh, what she wants to do. So with Conference of the Birds, we made a big show where two, three thousand people at the evening are coming and it was all about, uh, well, uh, the, uh, the, the problems we have with biodiversity and what can we do about that to use art and culture. And in the end of the day, of course, uh, this science and this art and culture leads to innovation uh, ideas. Um, and that has to do with education, uh, so getting the young people into the landscapes again. Uh, has to do with debate and dialogue throughout the, the country and uh, to, to get people involved in this topic, what's happening in our landscapes. Organized living labs, for example, where new agricultural uh, business models are developed, uh, where nature and, and uh, production are more in balance with each other. So these are uh, activities uh, which are spin-offs uh, of this network. Um, as examples. And of course, this is the center of Leeuwarden. You will not recognize it, but hopefully one day on this highest building of, of uh, Leeuwarden, uh, there will stand a, a grotto, a god with bird on top of that. So hopefully in five or ten years, we will be able to see this bird while, uh, while he's here in the, in the Netherlands and breeding and getting new uh, chickens up and running. And that is, of course, then a symbol of uh, biodiversity which is rich and which comes together with the broad prosperity we would like to uh, have in the north of the Netherlands, in this Blue Delta. Um, so that's basically what I would like to share with you. Um, and uh, maybe um, Helene, you will uh, jump in. <laughs>